Hello YouTube, welcome to the next installment of the Evian blog. Today I'm just going to talk a little bit about the electronics industry as a whole. Um, but more importantly, I'm going to talk about the basics of electronics. Uh, a friend of mine actually invited me to produce this um, basic uh, tutorials for electronics and I've decided now to go right back to the beginning and discuss the building blocks of electronics and how the different components relate, how to test the various components, what they are, what they do, etc. So here in this first installment of the basic electronics tutorial, we're going to be discussing things such as resistors, diodes, capacitors, basic NPN and PNP transistors, and maybe a little bit of MOSFETs as well. Uh, we'll then go on in the next episode to discuss things such as AVRs uh, and uh, op amps, etc., and how they function in circuits and what their functions are, and of course how to use them. So let's get straight into the first and most basic of components, in my opinion, uh, which is the humble resistor. Uh, we're going to talk about the resistor color codes, we're going to talk about what resistors are, resistors in series, resistors in parallel, and what resistors are used for in electronic circuits. Let's get in. Hey YouTube. So by popular demand, um, I've been asked to uh, help you guys work out some of the basics of electronics. So today we're going to go through some of the basic building blocks of electronics, and the absolute bare basics of Ohm's law, and a few other things. Um, so we're going to be covering the formulas such as V of I R, P of I B, etc., and uh, how they're used, what they can work out for you, and uh, just basically the bare basics of electronics, so you guys have a better understanding of how it works. So let's get down onto the bench and take a look what it's all about. Hey guys. So when it comes to Ohm's law, we need to look at some of the basics. The Ohm's law, Ohm's law formula, is V equals I times R. Okay, now they can also be looked at as V over I times R, or in the triangle form that uh, we all know and love, V I R. So what this basically means, if we want to know what the current is through a circuit, we know the voltage and we know the resistance of the circuit, then we can work out the current. So basically for current, I equals V over R, V over R. So for a known circuit such as I equals 12 volts and let's say it is 2 ohm circuit. So 12 divided by 2, we've got 6 amps. Okay, so that's basically what the current flow through that circuit will be. Now if we want to know what the resistance of a circuit is, and we've happened to know what the voltage is, again, R is V over I. R is V over I. So V over I. So R, we don't know what the resistance is, but we know what the voltage is, 12 volts. And we know by measuring that it's pulling 6 amps from the power supply, divided by 6, so if we reduce, deduct from what we did over here, we can do 12 divided by 6 is 2 ohms. So that's basically how it works. Now if you want to know the voltage of a circuit, V is I times R, I R, or I times R, whichever way you want to look at it. So V is equal to, we know it's 6 amps, multiplied by 2 ohms, what does that equal? 6 times 2 is 12, so we know it's 12 volts. That's the basics of Ohm's law um, and basically calculating how things work in a circuit. So, as you can see, it is very simple. It can get a little bit more complicated with uh, lesser known values or higher values or whatever the case may be, but that is the pure basics of the Ohm's law formula. So, I recommend you guys take a note of V over IR. V over IR is this little triangle over here is pretty much the Ohm's law. So, now that we have a basic understanding of Ohm's law, I'm going to go cover one other formula, which is quite important, um, especially if you work with power, etc. And that is, I'm going to do it in triangular form for you guys, to help you guys out. P, sorry, P, not R, P, I, V. P over I, V. So what that basically means, is 
power is equal to volts times amps or I volts times current okay so to work out power how much power a circuit is using let's take the same one from above power and what is equal to volts 12 volts times amps 6 amps okay now 12 times 6 I could probably do this quickly but let's just do it on here is 72 so it equals 72 watts so 72 watts of power based on the above okay if you know how a for example if you've got a light bulb okay um, a 100 watt light bulb you want to work out what the current flow through the light bulb is so we know it's 100 watts we know what the voltage is 230 volts so I what is I I equals P over V P divided by V okay so power is 100 watts divided by 230 volts so we're going to take 100 watts divided by 230 volts and that gives us 0 0.435 0 0.435 amps are you getting the the idea of how these formulas can actually work together and how useful they actually are for a lot of things now you put in combining the two formulas you can pretty much work out anything of a circuit so you we now know for example here 100 watts 230 volts and that's how many amps so how do we work out now what the resistance is as we know R equals V over I the V is 230 volts the I is 0 0.435 so let's work that out 230 divided by 0 0.435 and that would be it's basically the AC or whatever the case may be that would be the resistance 528.7 now we know this is based on a basic DC circuit blah 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 but I'm not going to go into the complexities of that now I'm just showing you how you can derive and basically adapt the formulas and bring them together to calculate different things so 230 volts 0 0.435 amps that would be the resistance for it to actually be correct but now if you take a light bulb this is based on like I say DC circuits etc but if you take a light bulb things got a little bit more complicated because of RMS values power is different so it's, it's, it's pretty much the same thing but yeah I'm not going to go into all those fine details now so that gives you a basic idea what the impedances of the circuit that uh, or the light bulb under utilization now how true is this well pretty much anything that you've seen on this formula sheet you're welcome to go and plug it in and actually try it out and uh, do some math but what I'm going to do for you now is we're actually going to do some of this math on a breadboard to show you guys how it actually functions right so here we've got a 10 ohm resistor here we get the outputs from a power supply what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to preset up this power supply I'm using the multimeter so you guys can see the value that I'm setting it at so let's just pick a voltage around 5 okay so there we've got 5 volts or 4.995 volts closest damn it okay so we've got 5 volts of DC now 5 volts 10 ohms we kind of know what the math is going to do yeah so to work out the current flow through this resistor at 5 volts it is a 10 ohm resistor okay so I equals V over R so 5 divided by 10 0 0.5 amps so we're going to expect 0 0.5 amps now bearing in mind 0 0.5 amps it's a 5 watt resistor so 0 0.5 power volts times amps so 5 volts times 0 0.5 so 5 times 0.5 equals 2.5 watts this is a 5 watt so 
we will be fine with the power okay again all works together so now when I connect this resistor up to the same 5 volt supply now this is where things get a little bit trickier because I need to quickly change this meter over to amps now bearing in mind we should be seeing around 0 0.5 amps okay half an amp let's see how true it is there you go half an amp almost perfectly um, flowing okay it has dropped to 4.98 so I'm just going to up the power supply to 5 again there we go so there you've got your half an amp flowing through said resistor and it's going to get warm but it is a 5 watt resistor so it'll be fine so that basically shows you how everything sort of comes together quite nicely and how the math of these things actually work um, bearing in mind there I just connected my meter and ammeter mode basically in circuit with uh, the resistor so we can measure the current flowing through the resistor simple very simple so everybody before we move over to step two of this basic electronics tutorial I want you guys to take away from those basics that I've just shown you go and practice it go and play with it and see how it actually works out for you in the next episode of the basic electronics tutorial we're going to be covering something about resistors capacitors and inductors Take care until next time.